Hello there, this is Yanis with episode number 5 of the Arcweave Basic Tutorial Series. It's about time we started getting a little deeper on Arcweave's features, and in this episode we'll discuss components. Just a reminder, you can find the link to the finished tutorial project in the description of this video, as well as every video of the Basic Tutorial Series. So, what are components? In our story, we probably have some characters, some locations, some inventory items. We may even have more abstract things, like pieces of information or emotions, it really depends on what our story is about. All these things that are important objects or classes or entities, on Arcweave we represent with components. Components are very flexible, and we get to use them however we see fit. For example, we can use a component to represent a character. We've already mentioned those two Linetti siblings that our player is supposed to meet, after taking a shower, and now it's time to get to know them a little more. Let's go to the Components tab and click on New Component. Now click on the title and replace the text with a name. Gillian Linetti. Great, now we have a character with a name, and let's say we want to provide some backstory notes, as well as the dramatic function of the character in the story. So under the name, we click on uh, Add Text Field, and we choose a name for our field, let's say Dramatic Function, and press Tab, and we can write whatever the dramatic function of our character is. Then we can click on the plus sign here and add another text field, which can be about backstory facts. Now what if we want those attributes to appear in a different order? To reorder attributes we can just click and drag them. And if our text inside the field is short, we may choose to resize it by clicking on this icon here. And there we have it. Now we probably want to make our component a little bit more visually compelling. Hovering over the icon, we get the option to change the cover. So let's click on that, and we get two new tabs here. One is My Assets, and the other one is the Icon Library. So let's pick Icon Library. Now we may prefer to use our own images for everything, but sometimes we may want to keep things more abstract and use a symbol instead. Or we may just need to quickly grab an image and continue without stopping our writing process. Whatever the case, the icon library is here to help us, and it has thousands of symbols and icons that we can use as images. For example, if we choose head, we get about a hundred or so faces that we can pick from. So let's give Jillian a face. And there. Now, if we look at the sidebar, we see the new icon here as well. I suggest you take your time and go through the icon library because it's pretty big and it's quite fun. Since we created Jillian, let's also create her brother, Horace Linetti. Uh, if we right click on Jillian's component, we see the option to duplicate. And let's try that. This is an actual option for boards as well. But now we have the copy of Gillian Linetti, let's open this and change the name. Uh, keep the dramatic function as it is, and here we want he and his sister Gillian. And let's pick a face for him, too. And here's Horace. Now, we can go on and add all the text fields we want, but I want to show another feature of components, and that is attaching components inside other components. Why would we do such a thing? 
Well, one reason would be if the two components are characters, we can attach one inside the other and name the relation. So let's do this now on Horus. Uh, let's add a component list and give it a name of family. And we can simply drag Jillian here. Now, if we click on the attached component, we open it. Another example of using this feature is to create a character inventory, a list of the items the characters carry. So let's create some items first for Jillian and Horace, and then we can assign them to them. Great, so let's attach those items to, let's say, Jillian. Uh, let's add a components list and call it inventory and attach the dice, the top hat, uh, the gold watch. And we can reorder this list of things by dragging them around. We can do the same thing on the sidebar. We can drag and reorder the components. But as components get more and more, we can organize them with folders. To create a folder, we click on any of those plus icons and then choose Create Folder. Let's name this folder Characters. And let's put um, Jillian and Horace in it. And we can create another folder for items. And now we are a bit more organized. Just a note, we can also make subfolders. So if we go to add another folder here, we get one new folder inside the characters folder. But let's keep it simple for now. Components are not only useful in storing information for the game objects, but we can also drag them into the various elements, signifying scenes or moments where those entities and objects appear in the story. So we have this element where we meet the Linetis and they refuse to speak to us because we haven't showered. Um, so let's make this moment easier to spot by dragging the two components of the Linetti siblings in the element itself. Now, we see that the attached components have pushed down the text content. We can easily fix this. First of all, we choose the width that we like. And then we uh, select the element and double click on any point of this orange rectangle around it. This automatically sets the element at the right size for its content for that chosen width. Now it's so much easier to spot all the scenes where a character appears. And if we want to get rid of those attached components, we can just drag them out of the element onto an empty area of the board. We can also drag components from one element into another. And we can add the same component as many times as we like. So this means we can give Jillian as many dice as we like. One other thing, we can drag a component from the sidebar straight into the board, and this creates an element that has no content, but has the mention of the component as a title, and the component itself as an attachment. We will discuss mentions in the next video, but let's just keep this in mind as a fast and decent way to start an element that involves a specific component. 
Components are quite powerful, and it seems that they will get more powerful in the future. We can use them to store any information that is character-specific or location-specific, or, in general, object-specific. That was it for this episode. On the next one, we'll see how we can mention boards and components in order to easily access them. If you are finding these tutorials helpful, please consider subscribing to Arquive's official YouTube channel. You can also follow Arquive on Twitter and Facebook. Let the games begin! Thanks for watching and speak very, very soon! Mm -hmm.